Hello and welcome in today's exciting episode. I make this Chanel style tweed jacket out of a 1950s looking wool tweed. Perfect, 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 perfect. Perfect jacket. So today I'm using a McCall's pattern 6041. It's a discontinued one. I wouldn't recommend it but I've used the Vogue 7975 more than 20 times to make green jackets. So I need a few vintage silhouette ones and I fixed the um, mistakes in the drafting of the pattern. So um, yeah, I've cut out all the bits. The fluoro is my structural layer. I use netting and um, you can use whatever you want, but I like the structure, uh, the robust nature of that. So I've laid all those bits down. Now we, um, once they're all in order, it is time to put down the tweed on top of it. So here is my tweed, all the pieces carefully folded. So I've put them each over. So I've got the structural layer underneath and then I've put the outer jacket or the tweed on top. And now I'm just gonna pin them together and then yeah, pin them all. So here they are ready for me to machine sew all the long seams. And um, then I'll just do that Ta -da! as if by magic. Yeah, I machine sewed them and I just turned out one of the sleeves so you can see. You just sort of have to check that there's no puckers or anything like that and everything's fine. And then the next thing you do is you pin the top front and the top back together to make the shoulders. Then again, turn it out and just I'm checking all the seams. There's They're all sitting beautifully. If there's something wrong, just unpick it and do it again. But it's better to do it really slowly and carefully the first time. The next step is to pin back the seam allowance on the inside of each and every panel that you've just sewn. And yet yeah, once you pin them down, hand stitch it all which does take hours and hours, but the finish looks beautiful. So I have hand stitched them down. The next step is to, so all the seams are done. The next step is to stitch the structural layer, so the netting to the actual tweed, just hand sew those. So um, I've put I put pins as guiding lines because I'm not sure you can see the, I've already done one panel, but yeah, so um, there's basically two lines of stitching in that one. I'm not sure you can see the one I've already done. I've used a green thread so you can't see it from the outside. So um, yeah, which is good for the finished product, but it's kind of annoying for you because you can't see it. So here it is from the outside. You can see the pins on the one on the panel I haven't done yet, but you can't even see the stitches on the panel that I have done. So I shall now go ahead and do this. I usually just pin one or two panels at a time and that way you don't get stuck on the pins. And yeah, you just hand stitch it. That's why there's so many scratches on my table, my workbench, because I just sort of, sometimes I hand stitch in um, that way. So um, the whole of the jacket is done now and the next thing to do is pin up the um, hem. So I just pinned it to measure it first, then I pinned it to get it in the right place, then I hand stitched it. So here we are. That is finally done and then of course I had to do the sleeves because I, yeah, I'd forgotten about them. So I did the same thing. First I did the seams. Once they were done, I hand stitched the um, the structural layer to the tweed and then I did the cuffs. So now it is finally time to get the sleeves on. First I did some sleeve guards or sleeve bands just to, um, I used a sort of strong cotton, but I really should have used two layers of the netting because this is a coating fabric. So it's a really heavy, thick, bulky wool. And this is a small cropped jacket. So it just, it throws off the perspective if you use something that's too bulky to, it makes people notice how um, small it is. Anyway, sleeve bands in, then the next thing to do is insert the sleeves. So I pinned them into place, then I carefully machine sewed them, which of course was really difficult because it's small and this is a really, really bulky tweed. But I um, went slowly and I got there in the end, then I reinforced it. And then the next step is to just pin the seam allowance up into the sleeve. 
and um, then hand stitch it in there. I'll show you some footage from another jacket. So this one, you can see what I'm doing. You, as you can see, the seam allowance goes up into the sleeve. This just helps connect the sleeve to the torso of the jacket and it makes the whole a stronger one piece. I know a lot of people like to make the jacket and hem the torso, like the bodice of the jacket, and then make the sleeve and tuck the hem into that and then just do one stitch to join the two. But if you want a jacket that lasts decades, you really need to make it this way. Anyway, here we go. And as you can see, doing the Steve sleeve bands the way that I did um, on this really bulky fabric, doesn't look great. I prefer my sleeves when they look perfect and this does not. So um, yeah, I sort of looked at it from the front, from the side, from the back to see whether I have to change it. See, the sides aren't symmetrical. It's a little hard to tell until you do the neckline because there's so much extra seam allowance at the top there. So I decided that um, I do, I do have misgivings, but I decided that I would go ahead nonetheless. So um, yeah, I left this up on the sideboard while I found some silk that sort of matched and I made myself the lining. I cut out all the pieces and I sewed up the lining into uh, basically an, a silk version of the jacket. And then I sewed them together and once I sewed this it together at the sides, then I turned everything inside out and I sewed the neckline. Then I clipped the curves, then I turned it out. And now we're at the point where I have to top stitch down so that all these, because these layers are quite bulky because at the joins, it's two, two um, bits of this bulky tweed. So I just have to top stitch all along up the front, around the neckline and then down the other side. So I did that. And as you can see, it's much nicer and flatter. And yeah, I, I know this silk doesn't match 100%, but it sort of does. It's got the fluoro green in there and that sort of rusty orange, which goes with the pink and yellow. So yeah, here we are. This is the finished jacket. I am going to bead it over probably with a lime green um, transparent plastic and glass beads because I've got some really beautiful glass ones, but all glass would be too heavy. So I'll mix some um, plastic ones in there too. So yeah, that is the jacket. It looks pretty straightforward, but it was a a bit of a struggle the whole of the way along just because I went with such a bulky wool but um I'm kind of glad I got it over with I've got another couple of tweeds to go this month and they are summer weight ones so they're much easier to sew so yeah I got the difficult one over with so that was I'm not sure whether it was a good idea but it's what I did when I forgot to mention that um, I left the bottom of the silk open because I need to get inside the jacket to do the beading. But if you just want a plain jacket, you just turn the raw edge under, pin it and hand stitch that down and then add a little weight to the back like a chain, which you can find in the jewellery section of um, Joanne's or any hobby or craft or fabric store. So yeah, there, and if you have got a copy of this pattern of Etsy or wherever, and you're wondering what, um, how you have to redraft it, it's just on the center front and the uh, front side panels. The center front panel, it's about an inch too short, but there's a dot on, they're called piece one and piece two. So there's a dot on them and you'll see that um, yeah, the bottom of piece one, the center one is like an inch too short. So just from the dot measure down and make sure they're both pieces are even at the bottom before you cut them and then cut your fabric out and you should be right. The lining of the McCall one doesn't have a yoke. So I use the sort of ratios of the yoke, tweed yoke to silk lining. Um, from the Vogue 7975 and just transferred that to draft of my own lining pieces for the McCall's. 
Anyway, that is the video. Thank you for watching. And I hope you've been inspired to make your own Chanel style jacket and make better fabric choices than I did <laughs> because this really was too bulky to make a tiny little short jacket out of. But I do like the finished product and it's going to be even nicer once it's got those green beads on it.